Okay, once again, I'd like to thank everybody, but this conference would not have happened without uh, Deepti. Um, so uh, this is just my opinion, but I think many of the speakers here have added evidence to my opinion that there are certain principles we as a community can work towards which are useful. The first is flexibility of treatment. It is not the role of an engineer to tell a doctor how to treat a patient. It is the role of us to give as many tools to the doctors as we can. What we don't want is for a doctor to reach into a toolbox and find there is no tool available, right? We don't know for sure how doctors are going to use ventilators, but we can build the best ventilators that provide flexibility of treatment that we can, and we can make them available, not just in the wealthiest nations, but in the other places where they may be needed. Even though we don't know for sure exactly how many are going to be needed. We don't know exactly what features are going to be needed. Therefore, engineering modularity can provide us resilience and an ability to respond to change. Engineering modularity is a challenge in the presence of the way we do authorization of medical devices and making life critical devices safe. But it's a challenge that we can rise to. Cooperating teams may allow us to get faster to the deployment of a ventilator that saves the first life. Why? Because multiple teams can operate on things. There are probably a few thousand highly skilled biomedical, electrical, and mechanical engineers working at least part-time on this problem, and probably a dozen working full-time on this, the problem of providing ventilators. That is an enormous amount of intellectual power. If we can correctly utilize it, we may actually be able to go faster. Okay, however, uh, as, as Karen, uh, or no, as Sarah Benson Conforti pointed out, you have to communicate more. The larger your team is, the more the burden of your investment in communication and cooperation becomes. From an engineering point of view, softening, by which we mean using software, uh, making the components smarter around standards allows greater versatility. And then finally, in a way that Karen Sandler pointed out, openness leads to confidence. We need to give, as Karina Malul said, there are some doctors in Kenya who are never gonna use a rapidly manufactured ventilation system, okay? Why is that? Because they don't have confidence in it. How do, how do we make that happen? How do we give them that confidence? I believe it's a some combination of going through all of the tedious steps that Michelle Lott pointed out, which are, you know, there's something that can be done. They're difficult, but they can be done in combined with third party testing, which is something that the open source software community understands and has maybe led the way on in a way that up to this point, maybe the medical community has not. So I believe openness provides transparency at an engineering level, which eventually will lead to greater safety. Okay, those are just opinions, but as a community, we may be able to work these things out. Okay, so what would we do if all 10,000 of us, uh, there may not be 10,000 biomedical engineers, but if we count people like um, Sarah and Narayan and Joe Kai and Marta, who are philanthropists and investors, if we count the people working on finance and health professionals and engineers and other people, you know, there are probably 10,000 working on the ventilator problem. How would we? behave if we treated ourselves as one team? Well, we would not have 100 independent ventilator projects. Rather, we would break up the problem into modules. We wouldn't have just one team on each module. We might have five teams or 10 teams because redundancy is good, but we wouldn't have 100 teams on any one module. And Deepi and I created this Trello board to sort of represent our initial stab at um, how this would be done. This is just an idea at this point, right? But we would separate software solutions from hardware solutions. And how do you separate those things? You have to have standards. 
You have to have published documented standards that allow that to happen. We would even separate quality assurance. How do you separate quality assurance? You allow third parties to do testing of your equipment, okay? We would create finance teams that would be separated from the engineering team. I separated it is not really the right word. They'd be connected to the engineering team, but we would create people dedicated to getting large donor commitments. We would create people dedicated to production cost planning and raising money for actual production. Because going from a prototype to production, you tend to move from approximately $10,000 to approximately $10 million. There are other things that we could do. You, as, um, as Dr. Griffer pointed out, you also have to talk about transport. You have to talk about sanitation, reuse, recycling, um, triage, um, a number of those, those things. But these are problems which we, we can solve uh, working together. So DP, would you like to have the final word here and talk about resources that we have put together to um, finish, uh, to continue the conversation which has been started by this conference? Sounds good. So the first thing I want to remind everybody to join the Slack channel because a lot of our speakers have uh, graciously offered to answer questions on that, not just today, but continuously. So that would be a, a phenomenal way to continue the conversation. Uh, I want to plug the Maker Fair uh, one more time. It's happening this weekend. It's an amazing event. Uh, please attend. Um, and and it's, it's going to be very inspiring. Uh, Dr. Joshua Pierce uh, from um, Michigan uh, Technology University has graciously offered to do third party testing for any open source, source ventilator efforts. So we'll make his uh, information available. Uh, we have a, a list of funding sources. This just this one link has about $1 trillion in grants and 550 uh, unique um, organizations. So please check that out. Uh, the Trello board uh, that, uh, that uh, Dr. Reed just mentioned, you can use it in two ways. One, you can be part of the community that helps us build this modular ventilator. Uh, and we'll send out the link, please sign up. Uh, the other way you could use it is that you could offer components that you have already developed as part of your ventilators uh, to this modular Trello board or take from it uh, if you think that you know, component that you have, uh, the design of which could be improved. What we're going to do is there's so much good information has been generated that we're going to be keeping a Google Docs. I know Slack um, may not be accessible to all of you, but we'll, we'll try to uh, link all the resources that we talk about in the Google Docs. But we're really requesting in the spirit of collaboration that you share your lessons learned, resources that you found useful so the entire community can benefit from it. And together, uh, you know, we can solve this a lot faster than if we work in silos. Uh, uh, Dr. Reed mentioned there are about a hundred other ventilator efforts. Uh, we have put a link in there to that spreadsheet that link to their websites. Uh, so that should help with the um, conversation. We're going to be recording this entire conference and we'll make the link to this available on a YouTube channel. So that will be available to you. And then we talked a lot about social entrepreneurship in the developing world. And we have some resources for you on that topic as well. So thank you all for joining us and my gratitude for all the work that you're doing to save us in a time of crisis like this. Back to you, Dr. Reed. That's it. Thanks, signing off. Um, we will be trying to post uh, recordings and um, other documentation coming out, this, out of this. Please keep the uh, conversation going. Thank you. Thank you very much to everyone. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Stopping the recording now. Thanks, everyone.